from the keys to immortality to cryogenics. Stay tuned to number one to find out the top 10 unsolved mysteries in science. Number 10. Why do we age? Getting old is an unavoidable fact of life, but should it be happening? According to Charles Darwin's theory of natural selection, the fittest individuals get to pass on their genes to the next generation. Life thrives in the reproduction of an improved species, so it's plausible that individuals with traits that prevent aging should have already evolved. This way, they would pass their traits without the age-related decline in their ability to reproduce and survive. This contradiction in evolution has been debated since the 1800s. George C. Williams, an American evolution biologist, devised the antagonist pleiotropy hypothesis in 1953, which purports that while one gene can lead to the organism's well-being in its earlier life, it can be detrimental in later life. In layman's terms, you're perfect before you pass on your genes. After this, evolution doesn't care about you anymore. Williams' hypothesis was in part confirmed in 2015 following a study by researchers at the Institute of Molecular Biology in Mainz, Germany. They studied the genes that influence the autophagy process in worms. This is a natural mechanism of the cells that involves the destruction of dysfunctional or unnecessary cellular components, in turn, promoting health and fitness. Their breakthrough finding came when they shut down the AP genes in the old worms. This result was an unprecedented improvement in whole body health and lifespan of the elderly worms by as much as 50%. This may not be the definitive answer to immortality, but it's certainly a step closer to solving this discomforting mystery. Number 9. The Fate of the Universe The Big Bang Theory is the widely held view of how our universe began and Edwin Hubble proved that the universe was still expanding in 1931. But is there going to be an end? Various theories seek to explain the end of the universe. The Big Crunch hypothesis assumes that in the future, the universe will stop expanding and begin contracting. In the end, the universe will go back to how it was in the beginning, which could lead to another Big Bang. The Big Freeze is another scenario that assumes that the stars will run out of fuel and grow dark. Black holes will eventually dominate the universe and also die after emitting Hawking radiation. The Big Rip hypothesis suggests that all matter, including space-time, will be torn by the expansion of the universe and disintegrate into elementary particles and radiation. Pick your brain and tell us your thoughts on how the universe will end in the comments below. Number 8. Is death final? What will follow the closing curtain after your last act in the theater of life? Will it be perpetual nothingness and darkness? Or are you destined for a happy life in heaven, stationed someplace in the cosmos? All major religions envision life after death. Remarkably, the ancient Egyptians regarded man as an immortal being and death as just a brief interruption. But what does science think? Before we tackle that question, don't forget to like this video and make sure to hit that subscribe button below. Dr. Sean Carroll, a cosmologist, says that life can't exist after death because there's no clear way for the soul to survive. He points to the quantum field theory, which holds that there is one field for each type of particle. Electrons and photons have known fields, but all quantum experience have not unearthed the existence of spirit particles or spirit forces. Robert Lanza, an American medical doctor and scientist, however, suggests that we have been taught to accept the idea of dying, while in fact it only exists in our minds. The me feeling inside your mind is energy, and after death, that energy doesn't simply go away. He says that life has a non-linear dimensionality. It's like a perennial flower that returns to bloom in the multiverse. Number 7. Why we dream what we dream We've come far in our understanding of sleep. So far, we know that we sleep in cycles, with one cycle lasting from 90 to 120 minutes. Also, we know that there are five stages in a sleep cycle, beginning with light sleep and ending with rapid eye movement. That stage where your heart rate increases, your breathing is rapid, and your brain waves speed up. 
but the source of the images and stories in your dreams remains the biggest mystery. So researchers have put in countless hours analyzing brain activity data in an attempt to explain our unconscious adventures. Two factions of thinkers have emerged, those that believe that dreams bear an inner significance and those that believe that they are just random images as a result of random brain activity. Sigmund Freud, regarded as the father of psychoanalysis, believed that dreams were unconscious wishes and desires of the dreamer. Kimberly C. Patton, professor of the comparative and historical study of religion over at Harvard, called dreams a language of enigmatic parable. The British writer Eric Von Hutton had such vivid dreams that seemed completely real, which led him to wonder if life was actually a dream, and if he existed purely in someone else's dream. Number 6. Can you hear the Taos hum? It all started in the town of Taos, New Mexico. Residents described hearing a persistent droning sound similar to that of a distant idling engine. In 1993, residents who were fed up with the hum reported the matter to Congress, leading to a formal inquiry. Sound equipment was placed around the town and the locals were interviewed. Strangely, only 2% of the respondents reported hearing it. But this was not the first time people had complained about an irritating hum. Back in the 1970s, residents of Bristol, England described hearing a hum in the distance, which was later blamed on traffic. In Kokomo, Indiana, hundreds of residents complained about the hum, causing the municipal government to commission a study. The finger was pointed at the cooling tower at the local Daimler Chrysler casting plant and the air compressor intake at the Haines International plant. Both were repaired, but the hum persisted. Aside from machines, there have been various medical explanations put forward. One is that the hum results from a disturbance of the auditory system. Second, it's thought to be the ear generating its own noises. What's more, several animals have been blamed for the noise. For instance, the West Seattle hum was thought to be the mating call of the toadfish. And finally, let's not forget the usual culprits, aliens and secret military experiments. Number five. The Heart Problem of Consciousness The heart problem of consciousness is a raging mystery in philosophy and psychology. The term was first introduced by philosopher David Chalmers. In short, it's the problem of trying to explain how physical processes in the brain give rise to subjective experiences of the mind as it relates to the world. To understand the hard problem, let's look at an easy problem of consciousness. It's easy to explain the following by examining neural mechanisms. How you focus attention, how you deliberately control behavior, the difference between sleep and wakefulness, and the inability of your mind to discriminate, categorize, and react to environmental stimuli. However, what we can explain, for instance, is why seeing the color blue stirs up different feelings, mental pictures, or a stream of consciousness in your mind. More specifically, why do you experience the world the way you do? Scientists can explain pretty much how your brain functions, but how brain activity gives rise to your subjective experience remains a difficult mystery for now. Number four, what existed before time in the universe? Something must have existed before the Big Bang, which supposedly made our universe, right? Well, according to Stephen Hawking, nothing existed. The famed physicist tackled this question as a guest in Star Talk season finale, a show hosted by Neil deGrasse Tyson. Hawking explained that according to Einstein's general theory of relativity, time, space, and relativity form a space-time continuum. And the continuum is not flat it's curved due to the matter and energy in it. He also proposed that instead of real time, before the Big Bang, there was an imaginary time and believed that the universe has no boundary. In simple terms, Hawking explained that the closed surface of space-time is like the surface of the Earth. Real time was like the beginning of the South Pole where normal laws of physics would hold. Since there is nothing south of the South Pole, Hawking concluded that there was nothing around before the Big Bang. Anyway, that was Hawking's take. Number three, what lurks inside the Earth's core? Here's a pop quiz for you. How far have humans dug into the Earth? Is it 1,000 kilometers, 520 kilometers, or 12 kilometers? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. But here's a hint. The average distance to the center of the Earth is 6,371 kilometers, which is 3,959 miles. Do you really know what's beneath your feet? 
Well, Soviet scientists, in a bid to understand the Earth's crust, started drilling the deepest hole in the world in 1970. After digging for 24 years on and off, they reached a depth of 12.262 kilometers, or 7.6 miles deep. To this day, the Kola Superdeep Borehole in Murmansk, Russia, holds the title of the deepest hole ever drilled in the world. It's even deeper than the deepest parts of the ocean. So, what did we learn from it? First, they discovered liquid water at depths previously thought impossible. And at a depth of 6.7 kilometers, researchers found fossils of 24 species of single-celled microorganisms. At 12 kilometers, the rocks were dated at 2.7 billion years old, and their temperature was around 180 degrees Celsius, or 356 degrees Fahrenheit. They had predicted much lower temperatures of only 100 degrees Celsius, and they couldn't go any further. At just 12 kilometers in, they had barely scratched the surface. They didn't even make it to the Earth's mantle, which is 35 kilometers from the surface and 2,890 kilometers thick. After the mantle is the core, made up of two layers, a liquid outer core that's 2,100 kilometers thick and the solid inner core that's about 1,200 kilometers thick. To this day, geologists remain puzzled as to what truly lies inside the Earth and sometimes compare the Earth with other planets in our solar system to understand its composition. The Mars InSight lander, launched by NASA in May of 2018, will attempt to drill into the surface of the red planet and help us solve this mystery. Number 2. Cryogenics Have you ever encountered the term cryonics? Cryonics is the preservation of human corpses in liquid nitrogen canisters usually at negative 196 degrees Celsius. It usually begins minutes after legal death is declared by a certified doctor. The body is quickly cooled to preserve the brain and prevent loss of memories and personal identity information. After that, it's a matter of hoping that, in the coming decades, advances in medical technology, particularly molecular nanotechnology, will successfully enable medicine to heal at a cellular and molecular level. For the corpse, this could mean reversal of the damage associated with the cryonics process, including any damage from lack of oxygen, fractured organs, and frozen tissues, leading to the restoration of full mental and physical health. It's still a mystery whether a cryopreserved human cadaver can even be brought back to life. But in 2016, Robert L. McIntyre and Gregory Fahey of 21st Century Medicine Incorporated did the impossible by cryopreserving a rabbit's brain and reviving it in near perfect condition without damages to the cell membranes, extracellular structures, and synapses. Currently, the world's largest cryogenic facility is the Alcor Life Extension Foundation in Arizona. It houses the oldest cryogenically frozen human on Earth, Dr. James Bedford, who was cryopreserved a few hours after his death in 1967. As of August 31st, 2018, Alcor has 161 patients in cryopreservation as whole bodies or just brains, and a further 1,208 enrolled members. So what does it cost? Preserving your whole body would cost $200,000. And for the head alone, $80,000. Number one, dark energy and dark matter. You may be surprised that scientists don't actually know what most of the universe is made of. Okay, but what about the planets, comets, black holes, galaxies, and asteroids, including the enormous asteroid Bennu that might hit our Earth in 2135? When all of it adds up, it forms just a small part of what we currently see and understand, actually less than 5%. But in the early 1990s, one thing was certain, the universe was expanding. Observations of the farthest supernova by the Hubble Space Telescope in 1998 showed that, instead of the universe expanding slowly due to gravity and mass, it was actually accelerating. Theorists devised all kinds of explanations, even questioning Einstein's theory of gravity. But one explanation has endured, which was that there had to be energy causing the expansion. Scientists called it dark energy and now believe that it makes up 68% of the universe. There is still some dark stuff in space with gravity and mass, but it can't be seen. 
Scientists named it dark matter, and it's thought to make up 27% of the universe. What do you think is the craziest unsolved mystery in science? Let us know in the comments below and take care.